ladies and gentlemen david here from groove digital it's nice to see you all here today we have a very interesting topic and it will be interesting for the people that would like to build out their brand websites there are the websites that they will be using to to showcase their brand to showcase their business to let everybody else uh, like customers to find the business and learn everything that they uh, have to uh, so that they can act on they they can see your prices they can see your contact details they can see what you're actually working on who is working in the company and things like this this is some uh, sort of a of a page collection which is called website online that is used for these purposes exactly there's a couple of different kinds of pages you can build with groove pages i will point out that one as well but i will be focusing on how to create a navigation for a website how to create a footer with menus for the website how to actually create multiple pages and connect them together so wherever you are whichever page you are you can actually navigate to different pages on uh, on the website itself also i will point out different parts that you would need to manage in case you want to have uh, your brand website created which a lot of people may not know about so this is uh, what is coming today i will not be focusing on designing website i will not be building out a website i will be creating just a quick mock-up of a website using the wireframe blocks and the pre-design blocks and we'll just put it together just so that you can understand the functions and and how it should look like but i don't want to go into designing today i want to go more into the functions that would need to be set up so that a multi-page website can function properly okay i will show you some examples and we will go through a lot of different steps that are required uh, but it is going to be an interesting topic for everybody that is planning to maybe bring over the website from other platforms like uh, like Wix or WordPress or things like this, um, when you actually build the pages, or uh, very soon we'll have also the page importer function, where you bring in each page separately, but then to actually set up your website, you need to connect it. You need to connect it with a menu, and this is where this exact training for uh, from today will be helping you. Uh, in case you're watching a replay, you probably have access to the the page importer function already so this is what you need to follow to actually do a website with a proper menu and a navigation but let's just jump in and see who is with us tonight or today it is uh after 6 p.m here where i live so that's why i say tonight but yeah let's just have a look eric is here hi david lemon hi eric it's good to have you here uh yari villainous is saying uh, here already awesome suraidi or Sur suriadi sorry <laughs> welcome to lemon nation awesome uh kisha fox good morning all christine case hello uh leonard is watching us good afternoon rob hola david looking forward to today's video i survived watching yesterday driving 90 miles per hour awesome well rob i don't suggest you you repeat that i believe it's a good idea to listen and then just widen your uh, your knowledge uh when building out pages and things like this but i don't think the best place to do it is while driving on a uh, on a speedway so uh tina joiner is here let me just click on her name here you go tina joiner happy tuesday happy tuesday to you as well uh jay with groove funnels the best is yet to come awesome i agree completely jay um facebook user can we post q, uh, q and a that was very quick we just started like a couple of minutes ago um q a session is coming at the end of the training so please in case you want you can post them in the comment section but i will be i will be answering them at the end okay so for the people that are watching the replay that don't want to listen to all the questions in the meantime um i don't want to break up the training as i did before i just want to get through the training and then answer all the questions at the end of the session okay uh chigo sophie is watching us saying hello did you say the page importer is working this is for everybody that is watching the replay rob if you are watching the replay today is the 25th of august 20 uh, 2020 um it is the page importer is not uh functioning yet but in case you're watching this at a later date you probably already have it um Eric Strickland, it's 11 a.m. here. Been uh, here in bowling 
Bowling Green, Kentucky. Nice, great. Uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, Stefan Colombiani, hi, David Lemon. Hello, Stefan, it's uh, good to have you here. Uh, pom, pom, pom. Abdul, uh, hello, David Lemon. Patrice, Facebook user, hi, all. Alicia Verdel, hello, David, hello. Sarah is watching us. It's good to have you here, Sarah. Um, Tan Chen Yit, James from Singapore, and it's midnight. Oh, awesome. Good. Good to have you here. Uh, Facebook user, uh, William Smith is a stud. Okay. I'm not quite sure what that is for, but good. <laughs> Paul is watching us. Glad to be here. I love Groove Funnels. Awesome. Jim Lush is watching us. Hey, David Lemon. Uh, uh, Analdis Mendez. Hello, everyone. Vida. Q Puncture LLC is waving at us. Adrian Botha from South Africa is saying hi. Um, remember to put Q in front of your questions, peeps. Correct. Uh, Sarah Browett, I believe she's in New Zealand or Australia. There, there is already 2 a.m. So great. Um, creating a multi-page website using Groove Pages. As I mentioned previously, in case you were not here for the intro today, we will not be designing a page. I want to go into the functions that are needed to actually set up the menu, set up the footer, set up the structure to connect all the pages together, uh, to point on some uh, some things that you would need to be mindful of when you're creating a, a multi-page website. But yes, so in case you are going to ask questions, please put a queue in front of your question and then ask after the queue. Uh, so basically queue, dash, and then how to do this and that. This will actually let me see, scroll through quickly through all the questions that are there. And um, at, at the end of the session, I can just go back, scroll through the comments and see what questions you are asking from me. Uh, if you want, you can keep your questions until the end of the training, then you can ask them over there and then you will get a reply immediately. But in case you don't want to keep your questions in your head, you can just pop them in the comment section anytime. Just please put Q in front of your questions in case there is no uh, Q or if you don't write questions, I may have I may miss it and I don't want to do that. So just please follow these rules, please. Yes, so I wanted to talk or just point on this one. Uh, there's a lot of people that make mistake of, of confusing what is a website, what is a funnel, what is a landing page. So I just wanted to quickly uh, talk about this one. There is big differences about these three, but they are used um, in the digital world interchangeably sometimes because some people don't realize what a website is, what a funnel is, and what a landing page is. So let's just start with a website. A website is a hub of all the information about your business. So in case you have, for example, I'll just go with the local niches. Everybody can understand that, understand those. Let's just go with, um, with a niche like a hairdresser, for example. I don't know why I take this uh, niche all the time. It's just really simple to understand. Um, so you're a hair, hairdresser company or hair salon, and you want to have a website where on the website you showcase your the maybe your your hair salon, like the like the place where you actually do the um, do the hairdressing. And you also want to showcase your workers. You also want to mention the prices in case you have special deals and these kind of things. So you can separate all this content to different pages. Oops. Uh, so different pages like um, contact us page is separately on the website. You can also do an about us section where you talked about talk about your story, why you started the hair salon. Uh, maybe this is where you showcase and, and uh, present the, the different people that are working in your, in your hair salon. Uh, you can also have a different page, which is pricing. You can also with a different pricing structure for different uh, style uh, of hair or wash. Uh, washing hair is that much and drying hair is that much. And this you could do on a separate page pricing. But there is also, uh, so this is basically a website, a hub of all the information that you actually create um, as a, like a virtual brochure of some sort. It, it is actually much more than that, but you create it and it is available in the cloud online so everybody can look it up at any point in time. They don't have to look for, for a printed material, printed brochure, which they can easily lose. They can just type in your name 
inside your your business name inside Google and then actually find you uh, and learn more about your business. So this is what the website does. And this is just the basic, the, the most basic information about the website. It can be much more than just a virtual brochure, but I just wanted to point that it is, it's, its main purpose is to have all the information on there available so that people can search for the information they need. A landing page. A landing page is a page with one specific goal. Let's just say that you're promoting, as you have now a hair salon, as we as we agreed, um, you have a hair salon and you want to promote one particular product, one particular, for example, hairstyle that you want to promote because this is a new in the world. I, I remember when, when um, I was not a fan, but when Justin Bieber became popular, everybody was was having that that type of a hair. When when Bieber had this this kind of a I don't know teenager style looking hair, so I remember I was I was younger and I remember in going to every hair salon they had a picture of Justin Bieber's head over there, like um, an option that you can choose for that for the hairstyle. So. Maybe if you have a special hairstyle that is popular, you can promote that single hairstyle. Like in case you want this one, then you can apply and then book a, book a time. And then this landing page that you create will have one specific goal to maybe get the people to, to purchase or book, book a session to get that hair, a specific hairstyle. Uh, this is just a very simple explanation so you have one product you want to promote it you create one page which has one option to book it or buy the product that you are promoting or leave and then that is the the landing page but the next thing is a sales funnel the sales funnel is a collection of pages let's just say that a sales funnel is a collection of landing pages which are folk uh, which are connected and focused on a sale where the the sales funnel is used to bring you and guide you along it's like uh, a lot of people online explain it like imagine going to a shop and then you know what your problem is but you don't know the solution to it so for example you know that you want a new hairstyle and then let's just say that your business creates a sales funnel which guides guides the customer uh through okay so we have now these hairstyle pick one and then you pick one and then you go to the next session do you want also washing of the hair and then and then you purchase the washing of the hair and then you then they guide you along okay so do you want also um i don't know some sort of special care or some sort of i don't know um like a hair a hairspray or i don't know uh let's just say that i don't know a lot about hairstyles but instead of one hairstyle only they all they upsold you so they did an upsell for watching the hair and the special hairspray and things like this so you didn't only buy one product you bought multiple different products and this is what a sales funnel uh, does it guides you along like hand in hand and shows you you have a problem uh, this company has a solution and not only one solution but it can also help you with your other uh, struggles for example you wanted to have a uh, your hair washed in the morning but you couldn't but then this company is offering it to you so you can also purchase that one so this is a sales funnel um it is different from a landing page it's different from a website but this is just the most basic explanation that i could have think of um yes so now that we have a clear understanding of, of different aspects, what is a landing page, what is a sales funnel, um, let's just go on and then have a look at different types of websites. So websites can be one page or multi-page. As I previously mentioned, your hair salon has different information it needs to showcase, like the contact us section, about us section, or maybe you can also do like a theme section, like you have this person, that person, where you talk about how you how you started the, your company, um, how did you decide that you want to open a hair salon. Uh, you can also have a pricing structure on the, basically this is an information that you want to showcase. So you can put this all this information on one page or one long page, or you can separate all these sections into separate different pages. As you may remember, I have created a one page website and in case you want to see a training on it, you can just uh, type into a search function inside, sorry, inside uh, YouTube 
or Groove Digital Academy or in the Facebook group or also in the help desk, one page website. Just type that in, you will find it. We go over step by step on how to create a menu for a one page website. We create uh, basically the whole build where we um, where we create the site with all this information, like a contact us, about us section and things like this. Uh, but today I want to focus on not building and designing a multi-page website, but showing you what you need to do in order to have it connected, okay? Um, so let me just show you an example of a one-page website. And it looks something like this. So this is a niche of veterinary veterinary clinic. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it uh, the best way, but this is uh, where this is a, a pet doctor basically. So this is a one-page website where it has the logo, it has a navigation menu, and some contact details. Okay, so this is an address and a phone number. So we can see that this is just a heading over here. Then they have a different section of uh, of like representing what they work with or who they work with, like cats and dogs and rodents and birds. You cannot bring a snake in this vet veterinary clinic because they would probably not be able to, to work with a snake. But then you have services where they showcase their services and then they have different information for the different features. Like they have like a, a section where the, the doctor comes to your home to to check up on your pet then they have a different team section they, they then they have a different about us section with some pretty pictures over here then they have a testimonial section and then a contact section with a with a map over here and then their footer so this is a one page website and it looks great it is very visible and when you actually uh, actually use the menu it is just scrolling to a a lower section it is just scrolling down on the page because this is a one page website okay it is just scrolling down to the section that we want to see so this page at this moment it is not created in inside groove pages but everything that you see here is easily uh created over there um so this is a one page website the page that i want to show you today how to create um and how to connect is some sort of a page that looks like this so it would have like a homepage with certain information over here it is these pages that i'm showing you are templates but i don't want to promote any one business over here so this is why I'm, I'm showing you this is a wordpress website so the animations you see over here they are created inside wordpress but i just wanted to show you like a style of a site that can be created as well so they have this information over here but they don't only have that one they can also have an about us section where you click and it loads in a separate page that is a, an about us section where everything that is about the company they they showcase over here then i have a services page where you can see their services it is separated then uh, on the previous one page website uh on one page website we only had one section but over here they actually separated in completely new page so they can um they can talk more about their services then you have different gallery and appointment page and things like this and these are all separate pages um you can put this on one page so that it is a longer scroll or you can just put in se separate pages and, and have it showcased differently there are SEO benefits for creating one and creating the another. Um, the biggest one is that with more pages crawled in Google, um, you will have more option to come in front of your, your customers. It is not like a set in stone um like a like a rule. You have to create a, a multi-page website because otherwise you will not be able to 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 uh, come in front of your audience that is not what I'm saying it, I'm just saying that because there is multiple pages Google is crawling multiple pages they can show it in a different section like for example in case you you type in um, hairdresser contact it will show only the contact page on some of the websites and if it shows your page which only uh, with your page that only on the bottom of the long scroll page you have the contact section people will probably not scroll there because they just want the contact information so google is looking for the relevancy if somebody is looking for the contact information um, and your page doesn't load in the contact information immediately then 
Google will not put your site again on a higher position. It will put you lower because people are not happy with finding your site when they are looking for certain information. This is why they will put up, uh, put in front of the audience the, the page that has a separated contact section. When it is loaded, it immediately showcases everything that the, that the person needs to know about the contact. So there is pros and cons of using one, using the other but it is not a huge difference uh, in Google's eyes. In case you showcase the, for example, now I was con uh, talking about the contact details. In case you put in your contact details somewhere on the top of the page as well, not only at the bottom, uh, then they will be able to, it, it will have a very uh, similar type of a process when, uh, so Google uh, crawls your site and shows it in the search results. So it is not a set in stone rule, but sometimes it is better to have one. Sometimes it, it is better to have another. But for this one, I would uh, suggest you to, to look into it more, uh, to browse around Google and then on YouTube and see what others say. There are SEO experts and also Google creates a lot of content. So maybe they actually said what Google prefers to see. But today, as I mentioned, we are creating and uh, actually connecting a multi-page website together so you can see uh, what needs to be done so that you have a menu, you have a footer, you have different page structures, you have the page URLs and things like this. Uh, but let me show you what exactly we'll be mentioning. So let's dive in. Um, number one, how to create your pages. Like we'll be creating a home about us contact and a pricing page. So these are approximately the base pages you would need to have in case um, I'm now focusing on on some sort of a service business or a product business um, in a local niche in case you are not in the local niche but in in other uh, niches then this may not apply this rule may not apply to you but most of the times these are some sort of a base pages that you would need to have on on your sites the next thing is how to name all our pages. So when we create a page, they're just like page one, page two, page three, but to actually be searchable and to, to for, for in the address bar, when you type in um, yourbrand.com forward slash contact, we actually need to name our page. We need to set this up so that the contact page shows up the contact details, okay? So this is what we will be talking about. We'll talk about how to link them together in a navigation menu and in a footer menu. Um, so now when we create the pages, we name our pages, we will talk about how to link them together. And also I will show you how to include the same header and footer on all the pages. So now you have, for example, a menu created on your home page, but the same menu, this, uh, the same uh, navigation menu, the same footer menu or the footer you want to have on all the other pages as well. Um, so we can, I can show you how to do that one. How to hide pages. For example, you create a landing page or a funnel page and you don't want it to be shown in the main menu or in the footer menu. I will show you how to do that. And also how to add links to the menu. For example, in case you have a blog, as you may know, for now, we don't have our Groove blog ready at this point. It is August 2020, and the Groove blog is coming out uh, at the around the end of the year. Um, so in case you're watching the video, this video later on, you probably have access to it. But in case you're watching this now live stream or around August, then at this moment, we don't have Groove blog. So for now, what I suggest is to have a um, HubSpot blog or... Um, I don't know, um, some, some sort of other blog uh, on, on WordPress or Tumblr or wherever you can create blogs and link to them. So I can also show you how to create links in your menu so you can link to an outside a website or an outside blog or somewhere else. How to create a drop-down menu in the navigation bar. So let's say you have a lot of pages. You have, uh, you have the, for example, um, a pricing page, but then you want to create below the price pricing page, a page where you actually dive into each of your products and then you want to explain what each of your products does or or the features and benefits of, of everything that you have to offer. So you may want to, to categorize them in, in some type of a, a, a nice way so that you have a home about us, contact and your pricing uh, and then different um products that that are available inside the pricing 
So maybe you want to to put it in a drop down menu so that it, not all of your products are lined up inside the the main menus. I will show you how to create the drop down as well. How to manage the info um, search engines will show in the results. So we will be diving in a bit into the the meta title, meta description, and how to find what you actually need to type in so that uh, Google and Bing and Yahoo and the other search engines. Um, uh, display inside the search results. So I will show you uh, where to put those details. And then the last one, how to publish your site and how to see your hidden pages. So in case you publish your site, you will have a navigation menu after we are done with this uh, training, but you will not be able to see your hidden pages from the menu. So I will show you how to actually find your hidden pages uh, on your site, okay? So this is the... The plan for today, I believe we are ready to go. Now we know what we will be doing, but let's just jump in to, to create everything that I was I will be talking about here. So we will start with creating your pages. So home, about us, contact, and pricing, okay? As I mentioned, I will not be designing and, and putting everything to be pretty and then brand colors and fonts and things like this. I'll be just using uh, pre-made blocks and then pulling them out on the canvas so that we have a representation of a website, okay? But the, the topic of today's training came from people that requested it. So multiple page website, from Petra Schumann, dear David, do you uh, do you already have a recording on how to create a second and third page linked to a one page website you showed us? So she now has a one page website, but wants to create a menu with multiple different pages. And then there was a David. I would like to see this too. Terry is also. I'm interested in this. Thank you. And then other people voted on it. So in case you want to request a video tutorial for me to do, head over to askgroove.net. This is where you can actually request different things. There is a couple of things over here that I will be going to do, uh, going through and creating. Uh, most of them will not be live streams, but in case you have something that you would like to see created, please jump into askgroove.net and then request it here. It is pretty simple. You just ask for the training that you want, add on some details that you want to see inside the training, and this will be uh, where I'm finding the tutorials and training videos that you request okay so ask groove.net perfect so how to create your pages let's just ju jump in to our groove pages or groove funnels dashboard i'm using today a free account because i want to showcase what the free account can or cannot do and it can do basically everything that we will be going through um but yeah let's just when we are logged into our GrooveFunnels account, head over to Groove Pages. This is the app that that we use to create our pages. As you can see, I have one site created already. If I create two more sites, then I will be finished with this account. So I will need to upgrade to have more sites. So let's just create a new site. And, and uh, let me just before we actually create a new site, I want to uh, I want to point on something that a lot of people were asking. Um, when you are a platinum or a paid member, so let me just show you quickly. So GrooveFunnels.com forward slash uh, upgrade. Okay. I want to point out to this part over here where it actually says you can create unlimited pages, unlimited websites, unlimited funnels. So what this means, what a website is, is actually this one. So you can create not three websites, but you can create um, multiple in case you are on a paid membership. So there was a lot of people in, and um, I will not say names because I forgot the most mostly that's the reason but um, when you create a site this is called a brand site so you can create a site which will be connected to one root domain okay so you cannot create a website from this one and have the same domain connected to a different site so for example I will create now this site this is now my website this is this is a, a Let's just imagine it like a folder 
of different files inside. When I create a page on it, this is a file inside a folder, okay? So this is a brand site. It It is my website, okay? So you can create unlimited of these separate websites, not only three, like on a free account, but unlimited of these ones. But you can also create unlimited pages. This is the file inside our folder. You can create unlimited pages inside the uh, the website. You can also create later on. We will have a button here that will uh, that will say funnel. You will be also able to create unlimited funnels inside a website, inside a brand site, inside this folder. Okay. So this is what a lot of people didn't understand. What is a website? How can I create unlimited of them? So this is over here when you click new site. This is where you create your website. Okay, a brand site we will call it. So now that is out of the way, let me just start by creating the home page. Okay, you can see here when you create a new site, um, you have one page only, and this is what you are seeing here. It is a it is empty, but it is your home page. So let's just build out our build out our home page. So what I will use is I will use wireframe blocks. Okay, so blocks, wireframes, and I will just build it out very quickly. So I want my uh, site so have a navigation bar. So I clicked on the navigation bar and pulled out one which has a logo, um, menu links, and then some social media icons. Okay. Um, the next thing I want is a cover image. So the cover image is just a big, big image, the, the representation or, or of what you're working on, what you're doing. So let's just pull this one out. It has a headline, description, a button, and then some logos here below so now we have already a navigation a cover let's just do some features over here like this one nothing nothing fancy just some features here perfect then we can do some call to actions something with an image mm, let's just use this one So I'm not following any kind of uh, a system. I'm just pulling out blocks that I think that that should be there. So we can do also another content section where we actually write some things out. You can also do, um, for example, some sort of a gallery. I'll just pull this one out here with some different images. Um, we can do some other feature block. like maybe this one and um, two more let's add two more just to finish it up quickly um, let's do a bit more content like that and let's just put a footer at the end okay so for a footer I will just choose this big one just so that it is nicely visible on our website. And let's just say that this now is my home page. I just pulled in the blocks. I didn't modify anything and I will not modify anything. Okay. So let's just scroll through and see how it looks like. So this is now my website. When you scroll through it, you can see that it has different sections and it was created fairly quickly. So this can be done by you as well. This is not a problem. But now let's just add on a new page and let's just create an about us section okay so i have a full on tutorial that goes into depth on how to create an about us section um i'll just show you how to find it on youtube so you can just type in or you can go to to groove digital over here in the videos and you can search for about us which is one of the recent videos that i created recent builds um if you want, you can also search for it. Is about us roof pages, and this will be the the first video that shows up. It goes into depth on how to create an about us page and how to make it fully mobile responsive from scratch. Okay, so this is explaining it over here. Um, but let's just build it out using the pre-made blocks. So 
I will not be pulling in a, a navigation at this time because I will show you later on how to use the same one that you create one heading or one sorry one navigation bar how to use the, the same one on all of the sites so um, let's just have a look so over here I want a cover but maybe a smaller one maybe not even a cover just uh, some sort of a smaller box let's just have a look maybe this one it will say about us okay and then we can we can do some content just our briefly our story we can do some images from the gallery for example this one or yeah let's just do this one We need to we need to um, we need to follow some type of a of a content section like text images text images text images. When you put a lot of text together, people just sort of scroll right through it and then they don't stop to read it. So um, I will probably just put in some sort of a visual thing. Let's just put in something like a theme or something that is more visual so that people can look at pretty pictures or something like that um maybe just a theme section over here come on there we go so our team about the team um let's just do some more content over here let's do this one and let's just do a call to action because as i mentioned in the about us page we need to have some sort of call to action on all our pages so that we invite them either to to see our pricing page or to contact us or to um to sign up for our newsletter or something like that just it needs to be something that we ask them to do on each of our pages okay and this is now our about us page. This is now the page two. Let's just do page three, which will be our contact page. Our contact page will also be built using the wireframe blocks and we can do the same content section that we used. I believe it was this one. I'm not quite sure, but let's just use this one. And let's just do a, a contact block over here mm. yeah I like this one yeah I believe this is enough for a for a contact page um we can also do a call to action just something simple Let's just use the same one that we used previously. I usually don't suggest putting in two forms below each other. So let's just put in some more content, maybe some features. Um, let's just do this one, the simplest one. There we go. So now this is our contact page. And the last page we want is the pricing page. Okay, so we create a new page. And this will be the pricing page. So let's just see the blocks, wireframes, content. I'll use the same one as on the previous ones. Um, here we go. So this is the top uh, content block. We want to go now into pricing and then choose something here that could represent something that we want. Maybe this block is the best. If we are thinking about a local niche type of business like a, a of hairdresser or something this is probably the best type of a thing that we can put instead of buttons maybe we can also uh, duplicate this and then use use this as a pricing and so if you want you can do something like that uh, just put in like 24 dollars and figure 
or something like that so this is this is up to you i'll just leave it as it is um so pricing i want also some features oops in the blocks features yeah let's just do this one and our call to action there we go great so now we have some sort of a website created as you can see if we go to pages we have a home page we have an about us page a contact page and a pricing page so now we are done with the number one let's just go to the number two how to name all our pages so if we if we click on this one we can see that this is our home page when we go to our home page we have a navigation bar but it, it just it just shows us that it is page two page three page four how to actually give them a name so that we know when somebody visits our page that this is the contact or this is about us page this is the contact page and this is the pricing page so we need to actually name those pages and the way we do it is we come over here where we where you see the page two we click on these three dots edit settings and then here we have the page name so look at this one now when we actually <clears throat> give it a name and i believe this is the about us about us page here we can now click on this one and it immediately updated so we can see that it, this is the about us page so when somebody visits your site that looks like this and they click on it they will know what they're clicking on so this is why it is important to name our pages okay so this is the page name the first one which will be showing up in the navigation menu the page url this is also very important when you visit a page and um let me just show you so let's just find the website hair salon new york and then let's just find for example salon v new york city okay and when we click for example on um i don't know contact us page have a look at this address bar over here in the top so I cannot zoom in for some reason but it says salon v new york city.com forward slash contact us salon dash v so contact dash us dash salon dash v so this is the url this is the page url but we don't need to put in the root domain which is salon v new york city.com we just need to add on this one this will be the page name so this is a root domain the something something.com is the root domain and then the forward slash contact us salon v is the page name so let's just give our page a name okay so page url um about dash us okay so this is how i would name it the the shorter the simpler the easier will uh, will be for the for users to understand where they are and also for google when they scrolling the pages don't put very long page urls google doesn't like that users don't like that the simpler it is the the easier it is to understand okay so page url about dash us so now if our site is now called for example um i don't know dog uh, dog doctor.com um, this page will be about dash us so it will be dog dog doctor.com forward slash about us okay about dash us let's just give a page three a name which is our contact us page okay and also contact dash us perfect very simple and the last one i believe it was pricing so we can just go into edit settings and then let's just type in pricing and also here the page url you can type in our pricing or uh, best pricing but i just leave it pricing because as i mentioned previously the shorter the easier to understand the better it will be for the people okay so now we have home about us contact us and pricing so this we are finished with the number two now i want to actually um i want to actually have 
a different uh, I want to sort a bit the, the navigation so I want the home then I want the, the pricing then about us then the contact us okay so because I believe the pricing will be the second most clicked uh, page then the about us will be the third most clicked page and then the contact us will be the the fourth most clicked page so this is how I want it to to look like but at this point it is just the the wrong way so if you want to move your pages around then you would need to just click these six dots I call them a six pack um, so just click the six pack and and just pull it to the position where you want it okay so as I mentioned I want home pricing about and contact us so now this is already set up for me if you don't want the contact us page to be the last you can just pull it up and then it immediately changes over here in the navigation menu so this is very handy when you want when you have a lot of pages and you want to uh to put them differently on a navigation menu this is how you actually do it using this six pack you just move it away or move it up or down so this is the number two is finished let's just head over to the number three how to link them together in the navigation menu and footer so now we linked it already inside the navigation menu but we need to to make sure that they are linked properly in the footer as you can see here um you can create your own navigation links for example at this point it is just set up that this is a text so you double click on this one and you can you can type in something else like um our menu okay and then this link the first link i want it to be home i want to link to a page that is called home and if i update you can see it says it home and it is linked to a page over here that is the home page then the footer second link let's just click the configure i want this one to be pricing i want it to be linked to a page which is called pricing okay very simple um, you can also choose to open a new tab or this will actually open in a new tab so it will not open here when you click on this link it will not reload this page and and open the 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 pricing page but it will just create a new tab something like this and it will be showing us here so when you come back to to the previous uh page it will still be working i don't want to do that but people were asking me what this carryover url parameters is this is very important for seo it is sending over link juice um this is just a, a techie term inside the seo community that when you send um people from one page to the other and it is sending some sort of authority over to the other page as well so let's just say that everybody that comes to your site comes to the home page and then if they click over to the pricing page you're sending over some uh, uh, link juice to the pricing page as well so it's not it will not only be the the home page where the people come to it will be also sending it over to a pricing page and, and so on it is a bit bit more uh advanced than that but that's just a basic understanding of what the url parameters are so let's just update it will say pricing the this one will say about us about us link to a page which is the about us page update and the fourth link will be saying contact us and it will be linked to a page that we created and which is a contact us page perfect the fifth link i don't want anymore so i will just click on the stylable element so when you click on this link only the link is chosen when you click on the stylable element the whole uh, kind of a container is chosen so you can just click on this button and it will be deleted um, that's basically it I will not be using and I will not be setting up this other um, um, this other menu over here so I'll just leave this out you can use it for something else in case you have more pages on your site in case you you want to to maybe show like our products or services then you can create separate pages for each of your services as well you can link them over here using the same thing so you add on the text 
for for it to be displayed over here and then you link it to a page on your on your site okay but this is it now so basically we created our footer menu as well using the pages that we created previously so now the number three is done so now how to use the same header or the navigation bar on the top and the footer menu that we just created on all of our pages so that it is exactly the same and they and you don't have to set up again all the links on the footer all the links in the in the navigation bar on the top of the page uh, again and again for a pricing page the contact us page the about us page we can just actually use the ones that we created already and pull it over to the other pages and this is done by using the save as a save block so when you click out of everything you can see that you have this up arrow you need to click the up arrow so that it doesn't show up anymore now we cannot see the up arrow anymore this means that we are in the block okay so the block is where you need to be in order to see the star icon in case you don't see the star icon you need to go up inside the block section the block section will show this star icon and the star icon is the save save the block okay so we can now save the block into our for example this is a navigation bar so we can save it inside the navigation bar okay it will be showing now inside our blocks section as you can see it has been updated content is saved so now we saved our our header our navigation bar let's just go over to the to the lower part and click over here outside um, so basically not over here somewhere where we have content but outside everything most of the times i click in the upper left hand side corner and then it immediately chooses the block itself okay if you see the block then you're in the right place then you will see the star you click the star and then you can choose where to put it you don't have to categorize it you can put it under no category as well but i just like to have everything tidy and then i just choose the footer category to show up okay so now we saved the header we saved the navigation bar on the top of the page and we saved our footer so then we can go over to the pricing page and then just set set up over here our header and the footer at the bottom of the page and the way we do this is very simple click blocks and then here in the design blocks not wireframe blocks anymore because now the design blocks is the, the option that will be showing up our saved blocks okay so design blocks is where you can find your saved blocks then as you remember we saved our header inside the navigation bars and it will be showing up over here the first one usually you will re uh, recognize it immediately when you see a trash icon next to it so in case you just pull it out as a normal block above everything this is now the same exact block that we saved on the first page so using this knowledge we can just scroll down to the bottom of the page and then place here our footer block footer block that we saved and you will see when we place it in there the links will be already set up as you can see our menu home pricing about us contact us there is no fifth link here or here and you can see our services is also over here because we edited it and then saved it and now we have it also uh, available inside here so when i was doing this one i didn't realize that we will have a form next to a form so i'll just delete the this call to action it doesn't make sense to have a form and then an, another form just uh, below it so now this is how our pricing page looks like we have a nice header we have some sort of a headline a pricing uh, some features like features and benefits of our, about our products that we are talking about over here and then our footer great so now we can save simply perfect we can head over to the pages tab let's go over to contact us and then we are missing our footer uh, sorry header and footer over here i know that in the footer i have already a form so i'll just delete this last one so the same thing applies blocks design blocks navigation bar you pull out the header the navigation bar onto the top of the page then you have it over here when you go to footers scroll down to the page at the bottom you can just pull out your footer that you saved previously 
drop it in there and then you have the same exact footer uh, as on the home page and uh, on the pricing page okay so this is done don't forget to save we have uh, some sort of a auto save option but it is always good to have the the save button pressed so that you don't lose your work okay then the la uh, we are now on the contact us page we need to go to the last page which is on our site the about us page so immediately here we will pull in not the wireframes but in the design blocks navigation bars pull it on the first first uh, place over here so that it is above everything and then we can just head over to the bottom of the page delete this um, call to action because in the footer block oops not here but the footers we have already a form that we are asking people to fill out so there is no need for another one so save and now if you scroll through all your pages let's just do it together home page it has a heading it has a footer okay pricing page it has a heading it has a footer and contact us page it has a footer as you can see here and it has a heading and then the last one about us page has a heading and it has a footer as well and we just set it up and we just saved it so this is the number four how to include the same header and footer on all the pages as you remember as i showed you press the block section so you cho chose the whole block press the star icon and then this will be saving it inside the design block section not the wireframe blocks in the design block section then you can just use your pre-made blocks okay next thing how to hide pages and uh, how to add links to the menu so i don't want my home to be shown because when somebody clicks my logo it will be sending them over to the home home um uh, section the home page okay so i don't want the home button to be here anymore i just want pricing contact us about us and usually people know that when they click the logo um, they will be heading back to the home page so let's just hide this home page and let's just add on another link that will be sending us over to our blog um, as i was mentioning previously we don't have groove blog yet at this point in time which is 25th of august 2020 um so we will be linking out to our uh, blog that is on a different site. So the way I do this is by selecting these navigation menu links, okay? So it is nav menu needs to be chosen. And if you chose it correctly, all your links that are inside the navigation menu will be highlighted with a green, uh, green outline, okay? So then the next thing is to head over to the configured tab and here it says pages to exclude so as i mentioned i don't want my home page to show up but i still want it on the page i don't want to delete it because this is the, the main page but i just don't want it to be shown inside the navigation menu over here so i can click over here to choose pages to exclude i will click on home okay and i will click update and as you can see it is now hidden so it is not deleted it is hidden from the navigation menu from this green part over here it is not going to be showing up inside the, the the menu on the on the top of the navigation however we now we are now on the about us page only it will be showing up on the other pages so in case you want to remove it from other pages as well you need to go and choose the the nav menu and then hide it the, for, as a page to exclude click update don't forget to save sometimes and then let's just do it for all our pages in case you want you can set it up previously um so before you save your block then you can actually hide it and then once you save your block and then pull it in to other pages uh so that you have the nav bar and the footer menu um exactly as you want it with a hidden home button then you can set that up okay so let's just do this one i don't want the home to be shown up update perfect um people were asking me why don't we have a global nav menu uh, option and we will have this one at some point at this point at this moment it is just a feature request so in case you go to feedback groovefunnels.com inside groove pages feature request you type in menu 
and it will be um bum, 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 bum. Um. And, um, I cannot find it here now it is not filtered correctly but you can actually have it here um just just look through these it there is somewhere that is saying like global menu so you change it for example on on the home page and it will be also changing the same menu on the other pages as well so this is not yet here this is not yet available but we will have that uh, at a later date uh, in time at a, at a later point in time but now that we have hidden the home page i want to add on a, an outside link so the same uh, thing applies you click on the nav menu and inside the configure you can choose external links it gives you numbers and then you don't know what to do with the numbers so it's asking you how many external links you want so you can choose one two three four five six is the max at this point um so you can just we just want to add on one which will be our blog so here as a label you add on blog okay? and then here you can choose to link to a page we don't want that you can link to a block we don't want that and you remember the block is this one and the block is this one and the block is this one we don't want that we don't want to link to a pop-up we want to link to a, a url so let's just use google for example let's just use our blog actually we have a blog so https column forward slash forward slash groove funnels um, forward slash blog okay so this is now our blog and you can have it open in a new tab or you can have it opened just normally in the normal tab um, let's just open it in a new tab okay so update now this one came to the end of uh, of the nav menu and you will see this uh, whenever you are adding on links inside the configure tab uh, external links external links will always be at the end of your navigation menu so the first links you will have is go are going to be the pages and then after that you will be shown the external links this is just how it how it works and this is how our our software displays it so in case you want to first have um external links and then after the pages for that one you will need to have another menu i will not go into this one because it is a bit more complex but you will need to just choose this one and then remove uh, on this one on the first one you will need to remove these pages and then just leave the blog and then over here you can have the pages but that is not for not a topic for today so there we go now we have a, a blog inside our header inside our heading navigation um on the home page but as you remember because it is not globally connected Okay, let's just see. It is it is just disappeared once we saved it. Let's just reload the builder. Okay, here we go. It came back. Um, it is not dynamic, so it doesn't update dynamically on all the pages. So we would need to add it on uh, extra here. However, as I mentioned previously, save and save the the block. Of the header block save the footer block once you're 100 percent sure that you're finished with everything that you wanted to put in case you wanted to put a blog uh link and remove the home link from your nav menu and do this first on your home page and then save the block and then import it on sorry import it on all the other pages but then let's just do that quickly over here so dot com forward slash blog okay. and then it is an https groovefunnels.com forward slash blog open a new tab perfect um and it is not google but it is blog perfect great so i will save it and it has it will be saved perfect and i will just continue on from here i will not add on on contact us and about a section only on the home and the pricing section we will have the blog visible this is not something that i would do on a live site but i will just do to just speed up the process of this of this tutorial okay so this is the number five 
the number six is to how to create a drop down menu in the navigation bar okay so i'm in the pricing section and then on here i want to actually add a pricing for different elements so i will create a different menu so a different page and this page will be a page where i talk about I don't know, flower arrangements. I don't know how to write arrangements. Arrangements, perfect. Um, flower dash. Great. So this is our page URL, and I'm happy with this. Then I also want to add another, which will be. case Oops, I'm not very good in typing these types of complicated worlds <laughs> worlds um, so paste this in here and then change the big B to small B and then this will be it so let's just imagine that now this is a flower shop website and I have the flower arrangements and bouquets uh, as as pages that i want to nest under pricing so i want somebody that comes to to the pricing i want them to be able to hover over the pricing but for 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 other pages to be shown below the pricing okay so the way i do this is i i click on the six pack pull it up here next to pricing and then just pull it here a bit inside as you can see now it is it is a bit indented it is just a bit inside and this is now nested so the flower arrangements are nested under the pricing uh, page okay so let's just do this also with the bouquets let's just pull it in most of the times when you just pull it left or right it doesn't work so you have to pull it a bit up so that it actually slides in and then let's just leave it here perfect so now when we have this one we can click save and it should be showing once we refresh the page so let's just have a look perfect so we are on the pricing here we go so for some reason it is not showing up on the home page let's I will, we will have a look what what happened there but it is whole it is showing up on this page which is the pricing page and now it is showing up over here as you can see this is how it will be visible uh for the people when they come and then they visit your your page they can click on these uh on these pages over here so that is very simple um when you are previewing this in a mobile this is how it will be showing up so the pricing will have another button when they click that button it will be uh, everything else will slide down and then these will be having uh, a bit of more space so let me just show you what i mean by this so when you click on this one it just it just shows up as a hover but when you visit it in a mobile menu in the mobile navigation you get a hamburger menu and when you click it it immediately shows these over here so everything is uh, everything slides down but these flower arrangements and bouquets are in in a smaller font and they show up uh as under pricing okay great so that is about that and as i mentioned in case you're working with headers and navigations and footers do set them up with the pages first and then include them on all the other pages um how to manage the info search engines will show in the results okay so this is where i want to point towards the meta description meta description and meta title and these are the disinformation for example when you show up in a search results for example for salon v in new york city it shows up this is their meta title salon v new york city uh, this horizontal line uh, sorry vertical line hair salon vertical line hair color vertical line hair save hair services and then the meta description is pamper yourself at salon v where talent meets creativity uh, despite salon v's new classic chic decor you won't uh, find any pretentiousness here okay 
So this is their description. This is their meta title. Where you can find this information? This information can be found inside the pages. This button over here. So for example, for the home page, you can edit the settings and it is found on page title and the meta description. The meta keywords is just the keywords that you want to rank for. You want, uh, you want to be found on Google when somebody types in your business. For example, in case as we were now using uh, flower arrangements and bouquets, if you're a flower shop, you probably want to type in bouquets uh, and then your, your location, for example, bouquets, New York City, or flower arrangements, uh, New York City, or best flower shop, New York City, and things like this. So you want to add on keywords so when people are looking for those keywords inside Google so that you can also uh, show up. For example, I was looking for hair salon New York, and this is where uh salon v new york city showed up so then if you would be a hair salon you would also type in hair salon new york okay. and then you separate them by commas so then the next would be um best hair dresser NYC and all kinds of different other keywords that you can think of uh, that people would be searching for. So this is by itself a whole um, a whole another level of, of research. Uh, there is there are tools that can give you the the most searched queries. For example, there is Uber Suggest. Uber Suggest is a free tool you can use. It's quite limited at this point. Previously, it was giving you a lot of in, a lot of interesting details, but now as they um, as they turn on their pricing structure, and then for for now you can you need to pay for it. Uh, let's just type in um, New York flower shop. Okay. When you type in your keyword, it will give you other keyword ideas, and it will give you a couple of keyword ideas, and these ones will be most probably the the, the ones that you want to include also in your uh, on your pages. For example, it gives you the keyword ideas: New York flower shop, New York City flower shop, flower shop in New York City, New York City flower shop, the flower shop, New York City flower shop in New York, flower shop in Brooklyn, New York, and things like this. You can view all keyword ideas. I believe uh, it stops at one point because it is asking you to to log in or or pay, but it just gives you ideas that you can you can find. You can do this also with an inbuilt feature from uh, Google Ads. It is Google Keyword Suggestions. Um, it is a bit tricky to get in there, so I suggest you to to see um, a YouTube video how to use Google Keyword Planner. There we go. How to use Google Keyword Planner. Um, I suggest you to visit a tutorial on how to get in there because you would probably uh, need to get a bit more information to to go in there um it is a free tool it is um it is easy to use and it could give you more than the uber suggest tool okay so these are just two tools that you can use to find these keywords but my suggestion for the page title and the meta description that you should use. I was asked this multiple times what is the page title that I, I should use? Should I just write my company name like let's just use for example uh, lemon uh, flower shop and then dash home or should I use this vertical line that they were using leave this is yeah um, or and then type in home or how should I how should I write it? How, what should I do? Uh, what should I write in the meta description? So my suggestion is always to go into Google, find your competitors and find basically the, the businesses that are ranking uh, organically the highest inside Google search results. So if that would be me and I would be a flower shop, then I would be typing in flower shop, just the most basic keyword, um, for example, New York. Okay. Um, 
then you can scroll through you can see flower shop new york city that is their their uh, domain over here you can see plant shed plantshed.com colon plants and flowers delivery in new york city and then you can see what the, the your competitors are doing what the pages that rank the highest inside google are doing and then you can follow this one so for example if we want to follow the column for its uh, for example planchet.com colon plants and flower delivery then it says uh, scott's flower new york city colon new york city flower delivery dash florist new york okay um maybe we could do with this column because we have also sent flowers colon new york uh comma new york flower delivery and then this so you can do different ways um let's just use let's just use this comma okay so let's just do lemon flower shop comma um, florist and um, i don't know what they were using florist and flower shop Workshop, no. Let's just type in NYC. Okay, so something like this. Just, just see what the others uh, in your niche, in your uh, industry, are doing, and then model it. Don't copy exactly the same thing as they are writing. Just try to think. Try, try to see the the, the top ten, top five pages, and how they are ranking, and then do something very similar. There is a reason that they are ranking very high, and this could be it it doesn't have to be but just model something that works this is my suggestion always and it for 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 now it didn't fail me for the description meta description what can we write so let's just have a look planchette same day flower delivery new york city uh, we hand deliver flower arrangements da, 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 da. um okay this one is not luxury family owned florist since da 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 uh send uh high-end flower arrangements with superior style so what you need to do in this description is actually um put in as many keywords as you can for example um they did this one over here but it's very strange um best florist and flower shops in new york city um uh, ellen flower scott flowers jerome flower flower girl um i believe they're just lining up the, the florist but in case you have found your keywords inside google um google keyword planner and then you have flower shop new york city best florist in in brooklyn and things like this so Try to include as many of these phrases as you can inside your description. So you could do, we are a family owned flower shop in New York. I'm just typing everything with small with lowercase letters, York. Um, specializing in creating bouquets flower arrangements and da, da 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 so you can use these phrases that you want to be found inside google's in that inside your meta description so try to um try to use as many as you can but try that it looks still like human wrote it don't just don't just uh, like put in just keywords like flower shop new york new york city florist da, da 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 don't just put all the keywords inside try to make it as a readable word that it is it has been um it has been written by a human and not uh, a bot because google wants humans to find human websites and not humans to find bots and bot created websites so try to be as much human uh in your in typing out the description as possible but also in the meantime try to use as many um, of your keywords that you that you found using uh, uber suggest or google keyword planner or other tools for finding these keywords okay so let's just say that creating oh is oh okay so i'm missing uh, okay uh, and flower 
our arrangements. Let's just see if, it, if I typed it out correctly. I probably didn't, but it's okay. Great, so that is it for the pricing. Um, or that was it for the home. For the pricing, you can put a different one. So flower shop, New York pricing. So you can do for your site, but you can do also for each of the pages. So if you if you Google your competitor and if they have a pricing um, pricing page, just have a look what the title uh, and the meta description is from those pages, and you can follow and model those so that it actually shows uh, your site also shows up quite high on the. Uh, inside the search results and also for contact okay. uh, for example this one contact dash the flower shop um, then let's just look contact flowers by da 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 contact New York City da 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 so you can have a look for each of their pages and how they are they are creating it but try to follow the same rules in case your home page is using this uh brand name or the, the the yeah the brand name colon something da 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 try to use this also on the contact page so contact colon da 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 or the brand name uh, colon and i mean you understand what i'm saying don't don't do uh contact dash on one side or and then home colon da 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 try to use the same same system but also have a look what others are doing this seems like a, a long long process but it can be done fairly quickly and it could it could mean huge difference for you because if you do it correctly if you don't do it correctly it could be meaning first page in google or the 50th page in google so i would suggest you to look into this one how to do this but um other page builders don't have this built in this page title meta keywords meta description this for for this you actually need to purchase different add-ons and plugins everything is inside groove pages in case you're using it so you should use it i believe great so this is um how to manage the info search engines will show in the results and then the last one how to actually publish the site and how to see your hidden pages um i will probably try to hide a different page than the home page so let's just hide a different page let's just hide the bouquets page okay so i want to hide it from here not only from the navigation menu um, i clicked the six pack and i dragged the page over here onto the hidden pages so it is now hidden from not only this uh pricing over here but also from the whole navigation menu but still i can um i can find it if i type in the url and we know the url it's bouquets okay so let's just publish our, our home page or, or actually website and then let's just try to find that uh, that hidden page so when you're ready with your pages um, you can click the publish page here you can host the the page with us um, in case you want you can just click over here and then just type in your your desired name um, i don't suggest you to use this for a professional branded company website um, i suggest you to publish on your own domain so just purchase a custom domain which name.com or your brand name.net or your brand name.org or something like that it will be looking much better um, however for this tutorial i don't have a, a custom domain so i'll just use this one over here so i'll just type in flower shop okay perfect so now i'm waiting for a box over here to show up to say that it has been published okay content saved changes usually go live within a few minutes but may take longer okay so let's just have a look so i'll open it in a new tab and hopefully it will be showing up perfect so pricing we have the menu we have the blog which if clicked it is opening in a new tab and it is going to the groovefunnels.com forward slash blog as you can see it is loading in it is loading in slowly because it is on wordpress and here we have the blog perfect so now the rest is basically just to see um, we have the footer our pricing 
is loading in the pricing page about us is loading in the about us page it is working let's just see also on the pricing page we have this drop down if we click the flower arrangements we get a blank page because there is nothing okay and then also we want to test to find the hidden page as you remember we hid it by pulling it below basically from here the primary navigation we pulled the page using the six pack we just clicked on it and then pulled it drag and drop uh here where it says hidden pages but we can still find it in case we type in the url that we set up boo case okay okay so it is probably boo cool okay so i'm missing a u this is not a system error this is just my typing error here we go and it is loading in it is just a blank page because i didn't put anything there if there would be something it will be showing up but we can see that it is, it is secured it is loading in there is a favicon and it says this site was built with groove pages okay so we can see that it is loading in so this is how you find the hidden pages you can go and access those pages but by linking not by the the navigation menu over here so that is basically everything that i wanted to talk about today so we went over a couple of important things that are needed for for creating a navigation menu for creating a website but as i mentioned um if you set up a, a navigation menu on the home page only save it then when you actually are finished by setting up the external links by hiding the pages by uh, creating these drop down menus and things like this then once you are ready with that then you can save it and then you can import it and the same goes for the footer um i didn't do it the correct way and as you can see it is not showing up on each of the pages uh, same i would probably need to resave it and then re-edit on each of the pages so that they look exactly the same if you may have been thinking why is it showing up over here this drop down and the other ones they don't uh, for example over here it shows up over here it shows up but on the home page it didn't show up for it for some reason i'm not quite sure but what i would do is i would try to go and uh -huh, this is why because it's for some reason it is uh showing up the oh no here um it is not set up properly it is just it is not giving me the the linking option so i would probably just delete delete the navigation menu from the home page over here and just re-add it in once i saved it from the from the page that works okay so this is the workaround it it is just this way until we need until we get this global style uh, or global header global footer where it will be applying the changes automatically so let's just pull in the new updated one and this is over here and as you can see now on the home page it shows up as well this one so that's the workaround um sometimes it just doesn't work as we plan but there is always uh reasons how to fix that so that is it guys i believe i went through everything and mentioned everything that i wanted but sometimes there are just extra questions so q a please dive in and then in case you were holding uh, your questions uh until the end until the q a this is now the time to actually ask them so let's just see the questions that we have keisha what tips would you give to those whose business girl businesses currently rank on page one of google who are apprehensive about making the switch to groove for fear of losing their ranking this is um this is a complicated question it is not the easiest thing in case you are ranking well on on google and if you have uh, your site on a different platform I would suggest to try to do everything in your power to have the page recreated exactly as it is there and then just quickly shift the domain over to groove pages in case you want to switch if you if you um, have for example WordPress website and it is live don't switch first the domain and then create the page and then everything because you will probably lose the rankings because people will click on the on the on the google link and they would be sent to a 404 page or or somewhere as, uh, to a website that is not finished yet so 
when you are ranking come to groove pages build out your site exactly as it is there and then uh, do everything test out everything on a on a groove pages hosted domain first make sure that everything works as intended and then once it is 100 fully done then bring over the domain to cloudflare and connect your domain here and then it will be very seamless to to google it will not see that there was a change of platforms what google sees is links so you need to make sure that your links are the same in case you have um the the pages that were ranking in google for example were yourdomain.com that will be that will be okay but if it's yourdomain.com forward slash contact minus us uh or contact dash us uh, co uh, dash today so it is contact dash us dash today but here in groove pages you don't put contact dash us dash today but you just put in contact dash us it will be a broken link so it will not know what to do with this one because you change the links so this uh this will need a bit more management and you will need to go into the google webmaster tools and the google search console to actually manage those urls that google is ranking currently so for that one you need to have the the right knowledge when you are working with google search console so that you can manage these links so that it is seamless in google's eyes but very good question um let's just see the next question from mark why would you want to hide a page uh, Mark, that's a great question. You would probably want to hide a page in case you have a, a funnel that you don't want on your website to show up, uh, in case you want just yourdomain.com forward slash, I don't know, your product funnel. And you don't want to, to uh, promote that all the time, maybe in your, in your uh, main primary navigation menu you just want to hide this one and everybody that has the link maybe you're sending google ads to that link everybody that comes through that link can access that page will see that page other people that just come to your website will not see that page you can also hide pages in case it is like a like a thank you page for example you have a product or a, some sort of a, a sign up and then you want to send after somebody signs up uh you want to send them to a thank you page so you can hide the thank you page so it doesn't show up in any kind of navigation uh or a menu you can also hide access pages like in case you have a download page where you give people access to to download certain uh, products that you're offering you can hide those as well from from the navigation so you don't want somebody to come to a page where it says download they click on it and they actually download or, or have access to the products immediately that you're offering so there's a couple of reasons these are just some that i could just think of from the uh, from the top of my head but yeah there's loads of reasons why you would want to hide a page from the navigation <clears throat> um maybe a bit unrelated we are setting up a website development agency how can we manage customers account for websites built with groove pages groove members groove members is not out yet so for that one i don't know but for groove pages you would probably want to get them to sign up to their own account so get them to sign up through your affiliate affiliate link uh, share your affiliate link with your clients get them to sign up or create a, an account if they if uh, you are doing sales correctly you can get them to upgrade um, while they'll still can still can so you earn a bit of commissions but they will have an account which you can either work with or you can work on your side and then transfer the design over to them the way you transfer the design is just simply clicking over here you copy and paste this code like that you come into their builder to a blank page and then you you just paste this inside the code over here there we go and now you have actually copied over the design that you created from your account over to their account and then that is the way i would suggest it um, later on we will have share funnels and share features where you will be able to share um, pre-made designs pre-made funnels pre-made blocks with with your clients and customers and not not blocks with pre-made websites with your customers so once they click on that one they will load in the design immediately to their account and 
and it will be it will be awesome at this point it is not out yet but if we go to over to groove funnels dot com forward slash infographic here we go forward slash infographic you can have a look when that uh, will be out so in case you just scroll down a bit um or the bumps there we go uh, dun, 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 dun. Share funnels uh, with an affiliate link and funnel organization. So this is what you're waiting for. At this point, the goal date is September 09 or September 9th, but this is when it will be easier to do what you're planning to do. Um, John Alexander, how to set up my, my site with my own custom domain using your own hosting and SSL certificate without using Cloudflare. So you cannot use your own hosting um, with groove pages because um you can actually if you if you create a site you export it oops not here but clicking over here to the menu export it and you upload it as an hd html site then you can use your own hosting otherwise you cannot build your sites over here type in your custom domain but to have it stored on your hosting that is not uh, how it works groove pages has a uh, group pages is a cloud hosting platform cloud based plus platform which has inbuilt hosting on our secure servers and if we would give access to our hosting or basically so that you connect the hostings to your hosting it wouldn't work properly because it would have a lot of issues and uh, security issues and all kinds of different stuff that we want to avoid so we have our hosting if you want to host it on your site you need to just click this uh, this button over here export the site uh, that you created inside groove pages and then it will be <clears throat> you will be able to upload the files uh, the html files over to your server so that is the way in case you want to have on your hosting um chigo sophie is it a good idea just transfer over is it a good idea to always stick select uh, carry over url parameters in order to get link juice to other pages on our site it is um i don't think so that it is good it is <clears throat> It is something that you would need to look into more. Uh, I am not that well educated about this link juice and backlinking. You need to, to search for link juice phrase, link juice and the phrase backlinking. This is a completely new knowledge that you can read books and people are getting uh, uh, influential and expert inside of these backlinking space. So one says this, one says that. Um, in my opinion, you will need to test that. But most of the time, link juice is great and um, and important when you're linking to other people's sites and when other people are linking towards your site. This is actually um, actually carrying over the link juice more, not only when people visit your website. So, in case you're linking out somewhere, I would probably have it. I would probably have it uh, on. But in case you are linking over to your sites, you can, but it will not be a big, big impact to your pages. So it's something you would need to explore more in depth. Um, Tina Joyner, question. I think uh, of maybe answered my questions, uh, but still in uh, verification. If I have a .css file in hidden folder and give it a name. At... Okay, assets.css. Can I then go into home page showing the HTML code and just add the file name in the link tag? Um, I'm not quite sure, Tina, what you are doing, but uh, I believe you are talking about self-hosting or I'm not quite sure. To be honest, I need to be completely honest, I'm not very informed about css and the the code the backend code of the of the builder i know that there is some code and this is the css part of it and then at the bottom is the html part of it um basically this part is the html part um so i wouldn't be able to tell you what you need to do with this uh, what you're asking um I don't know CSS and I don't know HTML well enough to be able to answer it for you, but you will probably need to ask in the Facebook group for from the people that are more educated about this code. Um, 
I don't know what you're trying to do with the with this one so I cannot assist you with that but let's just look into other questions um I reorder the pages in my drop down menu because I want them to appear alphabetically but it keeps reverting back to the order in which I created the pages and in the drop down on the home page it orders as I created the pages not alphabetical is there a quick fix um not sure about that one let's just let's just have a look so in case I pull in oops if I just click on the six pack and pull this one up above the flower arrangements now it is it is above but in case it is below then it will be going to come below probably once i once i save the page come on save button and then reload Okay, so it is not showing up uh, here. God, David, what are you doing? Here we go. Let's try one more time. So let's just preview it. So yeah, it is not arranging it properly as I want it to be. I want the bouquets to be below. Okay, save. Okay, so I believe this is a uh, this is something we would need to look into. Um, let's just have a look on the the main page. Okay, so on the home page, it is actually giving us still the the old version. So let's just click on pricing. It doesn't show up the bouquet anymore for some reason. I'm not quite sure about this one, um, Kisha. We would need to look into it with the devs. It's a good thing that you found it. Um, we'll just see. Probably there's a, a there's a bug fix on that one. Um, I didn't see this one because I'm not using a lot of these drop downs but i can see that people need to use it and then we'll need to uh work with the devs to to find a solution for this um how do you resize the height of a container i have too much blank space top and bottom i cannot i can't change so joe this is probably because you are using blocks like covers sometimes they have too much white space that you cannot work with so in case you go into here and then you want to decrease the top and bottom padding it is not decreasing as you can see over here because it has been coded it is a stylable container it is a, it has been coded this way so that it, it shows up um, that way you can also try to go into into sizing and and try to play with the width or sorry with the height over there but it is not going to be giving you the the layout as you want it because it is just coded coded this way so what i suggest in case you want to use um, a custom height um, elements or blocks then to use the empty because then you can you can um, manage it to be the same height that you want the same width that you want and then for example the same content if i pull that over here now I can actually manage the, the spacing inside, padding top and bottom. And as you can see, I can add, I can decrease, I can like make it go completely away. I can also put it relative to the page and then and then make it 100% visible height or, or smaller, but it is changing. It is not like the, the pre-made containers that were coded to be this way. So this is something you would need to work with with the empty blocks, okay? um question can you control the color and background color of the sub menu yes so of, the, of this one the hover menu i don't think that this is a, this is a feature at this point it is just white i believe um let me see let's just test it out this is just a test let's just put it on red yeah it is it is not 
it is not changing the uh, the bottom menu I believe this is still yet to come um, is there any way you can post this somewhere like at YouTube or save the video I am currently at work and watch yes there will be a replay immediately on Facebook and YouTube how are you able to set up groovefunnel.com to group but still create a groovefunnels.com forward slash blog on WordPress I didn't think you could do that um, so you're just linking in so you create an external link and you are just using a URL to link to to your blog which is on WordPress so this is not a not a big thing it is just adding an external link we added only one external link which which is called blog it is displaying up over here blog which is a URL and we send them over to our GrooveFunnels blog um, I just have a look in a joiner how do we okay so this is something that I cannot answer um, is there a way to keep the default social media icons in the nav from changing to question mark icons when you configure your social media links so no um, you would need to always at this point you will need to always have it so for example Facebook in case you go there you set it up and you set up the colors uh, and you just want to change the link once you click the update it will also change it back I'm not sure why this is uh, done but this is dynamic it uh, it is not connected with the styling it doesn't read the styling all the time so that it knows that it now this is this link but in case you just want the link to be changed then it is communicating that way um, this is a good thing also that we can we can work on at this point it is a small change but at this point you will need to always make sure that the, the correct uh, icon is chosen so yeah can you set the na your nav uh, with a color and make it sticky but as you scroll down the background turns transparent no this is not a feature yet you can make it uh, you can make it sticky using custom css so you can just uh, give it a name over here and then using the using the custom css inside the page settings um, over here you can add on the code that i shared inside the facebook group let me just just show you where you can find this information once you are in a facebook group you can come into the tutorial videos and inside the tutorial videos you will find a video that is called um, how to create sticky headers navigation bars it gives you this code so you need to you need to copy everything over here copy it put it into the the page settings in the custom css like that and then let's just call map bar five okay copy custom attributes nav bar five save and then once we preview we can probably see it is not showing up in the preview um, let's just publish it okay it didn't take the code we copied okay here we go and now as you can see it is it is it is staying when you <clears throat> when you preview it or publish it and then it will be staying you can also add on um shadows to this block like this way and then it looks a bit better it is hovering over everything it is going halfway only in the builder but once you actually preview the page or or publish it then it goes all the way down as you can see so this is how you can create a uh, sticky nav bar menus so you can just go to the go to the block section so you select the the block you name it usually it has already a name navbar 6 navbar 5 and you just copy over this piece of code that i i shared in this video here in the facebook group uh, copy over this code pop it into the page settings uh, of the page that you want to have the sticky navbar and that's it um, let's just see 
question what happens if you have the same header and footer saved as your favorites with different domains how do you distinguish which is which um at this point there is no distinct distinction you would you would probably uh, save it in a different um different sections or different categories but my designs are never the same so i'm really e easily uh, knowing which one is which for example over here you can see slightly that there is a a drop down menu in this pricing over here it is showing home pricing contact so i can just easily delete this that i don't need however um if i would have a lot of websites a lot of different sites um most of the sites that you create will are not looking the same if they are looking the same it's probably not the best to have that at least the logo will be the same or the colors will be the same and this will be visible over here so it it has not been a problem so far um bum, bum, bum. will you please comment on the importance of how uh, of not having spaces and special characters in url name for those new to web uh, web building also been uh we've been advised not to use capital letters care to comment on that one as well yes so my thinking is never to use any kind of special um special characters because it will be breaking your site except uh dashes inside a url um and forward slashes but you should not right forward slashes this is something that is dynamically added on by the system so when you're creating your urls you have two options you can write the the url this way like pricing structure or you can do pricing dash structure these are the two ways i suggest you to do other ways i don't suggest you to do um you cannot use spaces you cannot use uh, stars or hashtags or something like that because that is not going to be loading in it will be breaking your site you will get the 404 error so just a dash is the the thing you need to you need to work with also as keisha said uppercase letters inside a url is not going to be working it's not going to be loading in your page because it is just a structure that uh, that the browsers are loading in the pages they are usually if you have a look at your address bar they are all the time they are just uh they are just lowercase letters or in case you are working with bigger platforms like google they sometimes give you also uppercase letters and these special type of characters but these are dynamic pages when you're creating your own pages you cannot use these because it will not be uh, loaded in properly so keep it lowercase keep it dashed or keep it together like uh, pricing structure so it will be mydomain.com forward slash pricing structure in one word okay that is how it would be displayed so this is what Kisha wanted me to say let's just have a look what's the difference what's the difference between design blocks and wireframes design blocks are designed wireframes are not designed very simple to use to to understand if you have a look yourself you can just simply see what the difference is it's not a big uh, problem to see let me just see the questions 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 for website and multi pages how to create global element at this moment i create the same header and footer in my pages it isn't efficient because when i want to make changes i need to go through each page it's kind of consuming it's kind of time consuming and prone to human error how to solve this i showed you just save the correct uh block after after you are finished with editing in case you have something that you are you edited you save it again and then just add it on as i mentioned the global the uh, option is not available when developing pages how to uh, how to it looks good on all devices my friend says my site looks terrible on mobile site this is not for this tutorial there are different tutorials on making p pages and sites mobile responsive so i suggest you look into those search on facebook group search on youtube search in the um, 
Groove Digital Academy, you will find them there. If we just uh, build a WordPress site, can we move it over? Or this is just for new uh, new building of sites. So this is for sites that are built with Groove Pages. Later on, once you import, we will have a page import feature. You will be able to import your uh, your sites from WordPress, um, and it will be this knowledge will be used to connect uh, connect your websites and pages to, with menus and footers and things like this. Um, I guess GrooveFunnels platform is not designed to use a mobile. It looks horrible and not functional. No, it is. It's just a user error. You need to actually design them how you want it to be. It is the first platform that was fully designed so that you can choose whichever device you want. Uh, if you say it looks horrible, it's just uh, something that you need to work on more so that it looks great. Uh, if you are not very well versed, if you don't know what you are <clears throat> doing, I suggest either following my videos, like don't do your websites first, try to create a couple of uh, builds that I do, like go step by step and do exactly the site that I'm doing first. And then later on, you can start working on your site. This is the number one. Second uh, option that you have is to use pre-made templates. The pre-made templates are nicely designed for mobile as well. Great, so I came to the top of it. Let's just go and see the, the questions that are down. Um, how do you move a button from left to right? What? A button from left to right? Um, I don't know where is left, I don't know where is right, and I don't know what you mean. What button and where would you like to move it? If you want to just move something, like you can move it using the move tool, like you click and then you moved it away. Like, simple. Like if you want to move this, this is also a button. You can click over here and you just move it up. If you want to move it to the right or left, you can just use this one. In case you, huh, maybe you're asking about how to actually move it from here to here, then you need to do it on the container level. So layout, you align it to the left, okay? It is a pre-made container, so we cannot show you here, but let me just show you on, an, on a custom-made uh, block. Um, so if you want to have an image or an icon, it is now moved on the left hand side. You need to choose the container and using the layout, you can actually move it to the, to where you want it. Now, as you can see, it is on the right. If you want, you can move it to the center or again to the left, but this is done inside the container level. Um, how do I sign up to be on show and tell? Just today, tonight, I will be post uh, posting a link. Tomorrow, Wednesday, show and tell is going to be uh, at the same time as every other training at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just join us there, uh, post your link during the day whenever you see the post up there, and then you can join us there. Uh, I've put background pics on several sites, but when I click on a color as transparent overlap, it's not letting me do this. I have tried a couple of sites and all have the same issue. Don't you just color, uh, click color in background and then play with it and tra transparency? It's not working at all. This is not working at all because it, you are trying to cho cho change the container. So when you actually change the container background picture, it is not an option because this is in code. It, if you want to add on a color overlay on this one and make it transparent, this is not working as you can see. And this is this is intentional at this point. We will be probably adding in, but we need to, to, oops, uh, to work on the infrastructure of the code. I believe this is also on some other page builders that on the containers you cannot add overlays. However, in case you choose the block, so you need to be in the block section. You need to see the star over here so that you can save it. Then when you add on the actual image in the background and when you choose an overlay color, as you can see, it is now showing up. See, pretty. So if it's not working, it is just because you are choosing the container and not the block. Choose the block and it will be working. Um, OK, 
Okay, Leonard Simmons asked question, how do I sign up to be on showing? Okay, so this one is answered. Um, Batuli Kasim, is it possible to take a pre-made template and add extra pages navigations to it? Absolutely, and this is something I suggest you to do in case you, you don't know your way around the builder yet enough so that you create your custom pages. Um, as I mentioned, there's two options. One is to follow my videos and follow my builds when I'm doing custom pages. Try to do exactly what I'm showing. Don't try to incorporate it immediately as I'm talking. Don't think about what you need to create. Don't think about your business. Just try to do step by step and follow everything that I say. After that one, you will be able to, to when you are creating your own site, your own business sites, uh, it will be very easy to, uh, to know what you need to do in order to, to create it. What does container do? Sorry, so many questions. So container is something that holds your elements. As you can see, this is a container. This green outline is a container. And a container holds this text. As you can see here, it's text. This is also text, and this is also text. If I pull in this um, icon, it can be pulled in to a container. You cannot pull in an icon inside a block because that's not how it works. A container is used to hold your elements. The elements are here. Okay, dividers, text elements, paragraphs, lists, um, solid buttons, videos, forms, uh, like mockups and things like this. So that is the job of the container to hold your elements. Um, brim, brim, brim. Let's just see. What is the best way to transfer my current domain from Groove Pages to uh to another Groove Web Page Web Page? Do I need to delete from Cloudflare? No, 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 no. You don't need to do anything. You just need to. Um, so in case you have a domain connected over here. So for example, I have lemon test dot com. Okay, you have your site published over here this domain inside Groove Pages. Now, let me just wait for it to be published. It will not work because I don't own this domain. Um, but the simplest way is to just untick this, delete it, and publish the page. This will be re uh, republishing without a domain, okay? And this is now making your domain free. Whenever you type in, after after you unpublished your domain, you click this one and you click the publish button again. Actually, you deleted the, the domain and, and then click the publish button. Um, then you will be not having the site published anymore. Okay, let me just reload. Here we go. So now what I did is I deleted everything from here. I unticked this button, and now my page is not published anymore on this site. So when you type in the, the domain lemon test, it will be not showing up anything uh, because you unpublished it. So then you can go, just go back to a different site that you created, for example, this one, which is also a, a dummy site. You can go over here, and you can just publish it here, lemontest.com, and, and then click Publish. This is the way you transfer one root domain to another site. Um, after a few images import uh, from the rate limit exceeded it appears. So this is something that uh, happens when you are on your free uh, on a on an account and loading in most probably um, too many images. What I suggest is just to log out and log back in. Uh, rate limit exceeded is the communication between our platform and the stock photo site platform. So when you when you log out, log back in, and then you will be starting a new session, and it will uh, let you have more images. Um, and you can do also this one, save your work, and then refresh your page. Um, Averber integration does not seem to be working properly. I tried to enter various emails, no opt-in integration for Averber, and none of my test uh, emails get into subscriber list. It keeps saying subscription failed. Is there a solution? So Averber needs to be set up first inside the Averber. You need to create a campaign. You need to create a sequence. You need to create a, a proper list and then automate all this. Then when you actually uh, set it up, then you connect it with an API. You connect the... Uh, 
uh, Groove Pages with an API, and then Aweber will know what to do. Because if you didn't do that part first yet, then it will say subscription failed. Um, first, set up everything inside Aweber, then connect it, then test it out. It should be working then. Um, David, you're amazing. I just have to say that every time I watch your videos, I, uh, I learn you're in very in-depth and easy to follow. You're the best tutorial teacher I have ever seen. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, this is something I'm trying uh, to give as, ma as much information in the uh, simplest way possible. So sometimes I mumble a bit, like talk nonsense, but I trust you guys will ask the, or re-ask the questions if, if you didn't understand it. So. Um, what is the difference between a form container and background? When I try to make the form container transparent, it makes text transparent too. Uh, how do you create the form where you can make the background transparent but not the text? Um, so form container and background is, is a completely different. So form container is an element. Background is a, a section of an element. So for example here we have an element and we can add on a background um when you try to do transparency only on a on a on a color that is possible however if you are using a different option of transparency which is this one it makes the, the text transparent as well because it is it is now choosing the whole container and then adding on transparency in case you're using this transparency it will be remo removing everything okay so don't use this transparency but use this color transparency then it will be leaving the text as you can see um, form containers are used when you are building out forms and let's just say that this is now my form container it, it shows up in in purple if i want to have some fields on it for example this will be my name field and elements let's just let's just duplicate actually this one uh here we go this will be my enter your email so that i have now a name and an email field over here i'll just pull them upside a bit so that we can differentiate it and also i will pull in a submit button which is over here submit button i will put it on a red color perfect so now this is container background if you click in the middle of everything this is a form container we have a form container background as well you can also set it up to be white but you can also set up the transparency of the form container alone in case you are doing the transparency of this it will take everything away so don't use the transparency just use the transparency of the colors okay in case you want this color to be a bit faded you can use that one in case you want the color of the button to be faded just use that one like a background color transparency okay not the the whole transparency the whole transparency will make things disappear from your page it will be still there inside the code but it will have transparent transparent text transparent everything so this is the difference between the transparencies um so yeah don't use this one um bum, bum, bum. great so question from mark when will be will be allowed to store and upload files in grooves as opposed to using something like warrior plus jvz to distribute our downloads so i'm happy to say mark this is coming very soon and i'll actually show you Um, so, oops, not this page, but the uh, forward slash infographic. So, as you know, we are doing a rollout launch, which means that we are um, having different elements, different features, different um, pieces of platform, <laughs> different apps and platforms published uh, separately. But there is Groove Cell Marketplace. It's a bit delayed, but this feature is is close or on schedule it will be released on august 28th so most probably in three days we will see the groove cell marketplace groove cell marketplace is jvzoo and is clickbank and is warrior plus so this is where you will have marketplace where you can publish your products and then sell it 
using affiliates uh, that are also on group sale marketplace so this is the news number one news number two is that when you have a product I believe I don't have a product set up over here let me just log out and log back in on other um, uh, another account that I have when you're setting up a product you have there how do you want the the, the product to be delivered and there there will be also a change very soon okay it's just loading in let's just give it a bit of time it's in shock probably from all the changes i do i am sometimes jumping over to different accounts and i'm doing all kinds of stuff very quickly and probably scaring the software a bit let me just go into here try it again Proof cell okay so i wanted to show you something but i'll just probably need to just tell you because it, it just keeps loading and i don't want to uh, waste your time so when you go into into groove cell and you are setting up your product in the delivery or in the fulfillment section you have um like to to do an integration or or uh, send the link which is coming soon or upload the product to groove cell and things like this so this will be enabled very soon because the groove member is is coming out and inside groove member you will have a section where you upload your files you can upload uh pdfs and uh ebooks and audiobooks and things like this um where when groove member is set up you will be able to deliver files and you can also deliver access uh to those files uh tied to a membership so not only the files can be sent it can be sent using a membership so everybody that that purchases a product from you they will be able to access a membership uh, page where they can download it again and again you can also send it out in an email when groove mail comes out and things like this but it is it is coming soon so mark i believe you are happy with everything that is coming and this is coming very soon in just a couple of days um in which circumstances do you use the transparent function on top um, check out fmiami.com and you will understand so fmiami created a, a very creative site where i need to pause the this one and she did a couple of different things for example like when you hover then the this heart is revealed for example or not this one but when you hover over it then then there's fire behind it so some things like this like something creative or i don't know this is the this is the the first one where i would say you can use it here because when you you upload the picture you make it transparent and then a hover option you just delete the transparency you you make it fully visible and then this is what happens when you hover over it so that's my answer to you um, I will take five more questions and then I will end the stream because it's already two hours past. Um, do I use the same Cloudflare or other for other domain? Yes, don't touch the Cloudflare. If you put uh, your domain once on Cloudflare, just leave it there. Don't touch it anymore. Um, you just do and manage everything inside Groove Pages. Um, question regarding question: How to move button left or right? I meant instead of uh, having buttons and blocks layer on on a page from top to bottom how do i put a block beside another block oh, okay um i get it now so um this is a bit more advanced i don't suggest you to do it um i suggest you to use uh, pre-made templates for this one because it is playing with the layout i'm not quite sure why nothing is loading in at this point so um I cannot show you but yeah let's just let's just leave it at that please use a uh, pre-made uh pre-made blocks because it is a bit more complex than that uh, this is using flexbox element which is a more technical term of putting items on the page and i don't want to to overwhelm you with information so if you see a pre-made block where it has 
these types of things um, elements next to elements then use that one instead you can also create um, like two column two column blocks and then the columns you put your one image and then the other column you put another image and they are just next to each other so that is what i suggest you to do at this point so this was uh two questions i believe um I'm giving away membership for free. What's the best way to set that up? And would you use a join button where the order form pops up or would you embed it on a page where it shows up everything you need? Um, giving away free memberships is the best way to do through GrooveSell. You will sell a freebie. So basically you will set up a product for $0 and then you will say uh, GrooveSell, uh, create a membership account or or something like that for this user so this is the best way there will be more training on that when groove member comes out so don't worry it will be mentioned at this point it is not out yet um great i finally came to the end of everything i believe you are now well informed but yes that is it what i wanted to say and even more so thank you very much guys for watching i believe you learned something new today if you didn't i suggest you to rewatch it because there was a lot of information that was new to some of you and if you have more questions just please ask them in the in the facebook group or uh, or in the comments of this video but i will end it now because it is almost two and yeah two hours and 15 minutes long so let's just keep it keep it to the end and then tonight tonight we will have uh, a training with tom beal so join us there it is going to be at 6 p.m eastern standard time and it will be awesome tom always delivers very good presentations so join us there 6 p.m eastern standard time a tom beal presentation about digital marketing so thank you one more time guys and then see you tonight Bye bye